hello internet and today I'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions on a book that I've been putting off but I shouldn't have I should have just told you right off the bat now the book I'm talking about is children of blood and bone by Tony Ad Adeyemi of course this is gonna have spoilers because all opinions need content so let's get into what this book is about Children of Blood and Bone is a book that takes place in a high fantasy world that is heavily based on West African culture. In this world, magic was a thing. Certain people had magic and the people who had were capable of magic are very distinguished by their pure white hair. Now, about 10 or so years ago, the king of the kingdom banned all magic. But instead of just banning magic, saying you can't do it, he actually got rid of it. He did something that cut off all magic in the world, especially to this group of people. And of course, he propagated a hatred for all magicians and all people who are capable of magic. And given that their white hair is such a distinguishing feature, things are not well for even the magicians who can no longer do magic. Now here in this world magic is less of a ooh make chairs moves make things levitate thing and more of a connection to their gods and this is what they refer to as magic. Every magic user has powers based on whatever god they're connected to. It's sort of like a demigod uh theology a demigod system of magic if you are familiar with those so you only get powers based on whatever god you yourself are connected you are the child of that god that child of magic so our main character Zeli is one of these children she has shock of white hair and she wants to get magic back for her people now the story begins with her in her village talking about her fighting classes sewing kind of how things happen for her in her village especially since she is very distinguished as a person who would if everything had happened as it originally was intended to to be one who has magic now Zeli is a hot tempered hot blooded type of girl she is easily angered and ready to fight at all times now she discovers well in the market that magic isn't truly gone that they, she has a certain time frame to do a specific sort of ritual and she can bring back the gods and the connections to the gods thereby giving her people once again their magic back giving them a fighting chance to be free to have their magic and no longer to be oppressed so she embraces this and decides to set off on her journey however she does not do it alone she is joined by her brother older brother who is not a magician simply a normie is joined by him as well as the princess of a kingdom now the princess of the kingdom is another main character there are three main characters who you get their point of views one is Zeli of course um, one is the princess and then one is the prince for whatever reason normie brother does not get a a point of view I don't know if that's gonna happen in later books but he does not get a point of view in this book we get three other points of view Zeli and then the two royal kids so first royal kid the princess she decides that she's going to run off and in the middle of running away she almost gets caught and she stumbles upon Zeli who sees her and de decides to help her out along the way Zeli discovers her true identity now when Zeli is taking the princess and they are running away together the princess's older brother the prince sees now everybody has come to believe that Zeli has kidnapped the princess despite the princess having and kind of run away on her own so then we have this prince who is now chasing after them so the whole course of this book is Zeli the princess and her brother all on this journey to bring back magic all the while the prince is chasing after them to get back his sister and to stop them on their plans to bring back magic of course because magic is bad now we get a we we get a point of view from the prince we get a point of view from the princess and we get a point of view from Zeli. throughout the course of this book a lot of action happens of course it's very very fast paced it's all condensed into a matter of days because like 
I don't know, it's like something like the moon is arcing, some sort of thing like that. They have a time limit for her to bring back magic or else it's gone forever. So everything is very condensed. Of course, there is a lot of tension between Zeli and the princess as she holds the princess and her father responsible for the suffering that she went through and also the death of her mother and later the death of her father and many of the people in the village as in the chasing of Zeli and the princess, they are followed and then their whole little town is set on fire um, and there's just a ton more genocide to go around once again so she really blames the princess and they're not getting along now the princess she is really shy she's not very assertive she's kind of irritating to me personally because she has no self-confidence at all all right and while I understand that was character development, there was some parts where I was just like, girl, get it to fucking gather. Like, apparently this princess is really good at sword training. She's even better than her brother. And that caused some tension between the two siblings as she was such a good fighter. And the father was, of course, uh, sexist and believed that the son had to be the better fighter and that he was a disappointment and that girls should just do embroidery and therefore she should not be allowed to be better and would punish uh, each sibling with the other because the sister happened to be better at sword fighting. As such, the sister has a few PTSD moments about picking up swords and fighting, which isn't really the best case when you are being chased by multiple people, soldiers, your own brother, other things, and you need to be able to fight and you refuse to fight. Um, because you're too scared of what's going on. Well, I understood the character relation and like the whole triggering and the PTSD thing and like why she couldn't. At some point, I was just like, girl, are you ready to get cut up? Because like everyone else is fighting to try to defend you so that you don't get dead. But we know you can fight and like you're not helping anyone else. So in the first little beginning of the book, Zeli and this princess have a lot of tension between them because of the history of what the princess's father and what she inadvertently always supports by supporting her father supported with this mass genocide of magicians. And it isn't until they get to this one scene in which uh, Zeli really has to embrace her powers in which she is connected to a death goddess. So she's like a necromancer and they have to do this thing where they have to like get onto ships. It's to get to some magical MacGuffin for their quest to bring back magic. But they have to get on like these ships and fight this huge calvary battle with a bunch of other people and whoever comes out on top gets the magical MacGuffin thing because they unfortunately didn't manage to steal it so now they have to win it um and no one ever really comes out of this game alive and so once they get into this game Zeli's like okay we're taking you princess but you better not get in our way I still fucking hate you you're horrible and then she has to use her magic to give them enough fighters for their team so that they can hopefully win. Now in this process she ends up getting knocked out and Zeli's just like Psh, she's out and Lily I swear to god if you knock me over my fucking camera again I will beat your ass. You already did it once. Get away from my camera. Anyway so Zeli gets knocked out and in that time period the princess finally overcomes whatever issues she was having with her sword fighting abilities, pulls out all the stops, helps them win. They win their magical MacGuffin thing and then after that the tensions between Zeli and the princess are fixed. They're just now the best of friends. Zeli is no longer mad. Throughout the whole course of this while they're being chased, Zeli has discovered that she is bonded to the prince, okay? So she and the prince have like some sort of like kind of like a Kylo Ren Ray connection. I don't know, like magic is connecting them. So every time they dream, they keep seeing each other and at first they don't really know what's going on, but they realize like it's a dream that they're both experiencing. This is actual, this is magic. And because of this, there's like a lot of tensions and fights because of them, because one is chasing the other, one wants the other dead, like all of that sort of stuff. But like we're supposed to see romantic tension between them. So all of this is happening and you you know that it's supposed to be some like angsty romantic tension um, between them but like this boy is horrible. I'm sorry he's just 
really really horrible um while he does have redemption he's just really whiny i don't know what it is about these royal siblings but they are two of the whiniest people i have ever had the displeasure of reading their minds like zeely is hot tempered and she does a lot of stupid things but i could deal with like being hot tempered and getting into too much like trying to like fight when you shouldn't be and like jumping into situations ahead of time i can completely understand that but these two angsty royals who just sit there and cry and complain a lot i was not a fan so this prince he is like a really sensitive dude deep down and his father scarred him of course like not literal scars because this of course has like some avatar like mumbo jumbo in there it's like kind of related to avatar and some of the plot points you could clearly see similarities to avatar the last bit airbender and like that tone you really likes avatar but like scarred him in a different sense scarred him by scarring his sister okay like there's what there's one horrible childhood scene where like because the sister kept beating him or whatever the father was like your 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 sister is gonna pay and i'm gonna beat her until like you become better and like whips the sister and the brother has to watch her makes the brother whip the sister or like something like that it's like super fucking messed up anyway he's really scarred and broken on the inside and he's been training all his life to become a better warrior and killer and fighter but he doesn't like killing or fighting or any of that stuff so it really tears him apart he also really isn't sure if he agrees with his father on this statement of magic but he's also has self-loathing and self-hating as where magic is slowly coming back just enough that people can use it he's discovering that he is capable of some sort of magic so he is like now self -ha like hating himself because his father already didn't kind of like him and like only is a little bit warm to him and it's already like if you don't fucking get your sister back you're dead to me and now he's discovering hey i have magic and that's the one thing my father hates most so like now he hates me even more now i hate myself and then he keeps accidentally using his magic and he's like ah oh, i shouldn't be doing that because magic is evil and i'm not evil now and like all of this angst and stuff and he's kind of just really whiny a lot of the time where i was just like i kind of just wanted him to like get through his moral quandaries or be less whiny about his moral quandaries because i thought there was a really good conversation there for like you're being raised by this one person to believe this one thing however like you you're starting to realize that all the beliefs that that person had are not true so do you trust that person who raised you or do you make up your own mind or but what if like the person who raised you is more powerful and like there's really nothing you can do and like how can you fight against this like overwhelming power it seems to you and like there was a lot of good conversation in there and it just felt like he whined too much and he was just too angsty and he kind of was like flip floppy on his reactions and emotions um i don't like i don't really want to say this but I, this is the only way i can say it he was way too emotional for me um he was just like in the inside he was a turmoil of emotions and message messes and like it was very hard for me to keep track of his actions and his way of thinking and like how he was going to progress because there was no reason to it at all it was just emotion after emotion after emotion and like i can totally support that and get that um like having like an emotional breakdown having a meltdown he was basically going through a meltdown phase um so like i can see that but like a lot of times it felt like too much of that and not enough where we kind of step back and you gave a chance for the reader to step back um or even for himself to step back just a little bit to like kind of shut that out like i feel like it's just as common it, for people to have emotional breakdowns as it's for people to like shut off their emotions for like small points in time to like just reason their way through situations so I think that we could have had a little more blend of like reason of stability to his character despite the fact that he's going through all this emotions because you never really get to see the stable character the before and after you meet him while he's having a breakdown so you really don't get a clear idea of this character because he just spends his whole time being angst and meltdowny so you're just like i don't know who this guy is like i don't know him like how can i trust anything that he says because he's going through some stuff like he's changing his hair like <laughs> 
<laughs> that's funny his hair is changing because it's starting to grow white as he has magic and stuff um but there's always that thing like if you're going through emotional turmoil that's when you dramatically change your hair or whatever uh and then anyway back to my point is like there's some sort of romantic tension between angst prince and zeely through their prophetic dream things um so like they get their magical macguffins they're on their way to like sacred island place to do the ritual by the date and they come across like uh, a bunch of different things like temples of the gods they come across um a forest filled with other people who have magic they talk to these people because zeely has never uh known other people who had magic even her, in her village like magic is forbidden but even in her village there weren't a lot of other white-headed people that would like be like oh yeah I remember the day when we had magic or oh my mother had magic as well or anything like that so she's never really had anyone to talk to about those things except maybe her father and her brother who of course do not want to talk about it because that was the reason why their mother slash wife depending was murdered right so this first time she's like really getting into it having this chance to talk to all these other people but like when they're getting into the camp um they're being attacked right uh by what is it the the prince like i think right before that the prince and zeli get into a fight for whatever reason because it's like he he found them and he's like baby no, we're gonna fight and then i think they get attacked by other people they get attacked by the people who are part of the village because the village is like really wary so of course they're attacking intruders and like zeli gets in trouble i don't know what she does she does something dumb like trips and falls or whatever and then uh what's his face has to save her the prince has to save her and then like right after that zeely's all like oh yeah we're best friends mwah, mwah, mwah. like let's make out like i'm totally willing to embrace this romantic tension between us and my theory is like this is a common complaint with this book is just like how fast the love interest part came and like how she went from like i hate you go die to be like make out with me right now um while she was with the princess longer and like she was angrier at the princess longer like she was angry most of the book at the princess until the pr the ship scene right and after the ship scene and then she doesn't really have a chance to talk to the brother that often unless it's in their dreams which happen occasionally and then like the minute they re meet in real life and they have a real life conversation all of a sudden um like they're best of buds and she completely trusts this dude and like they're going to sneak off in corners to make out and whatever and I understand why like everyone's mad out of that my personal theory for why that happened so fast like why she held on to her resentment to the princess for so long but like seemingly was ready to fall for this kid that she already had um physical attraction to um after their first moments of actually meeting in real life is because she automatically trust anybody who saves her like if you notice the reason why it seems like she was angrier at the princess longer is because they actually had conversations like they actually had to be in the same room they had to be around each other all the time so like we got to see the brunt of her resentment and her hatred for the kingdom and her hatred for the princess right and it's not until that ship scene where the princess saves her life after she gets knocked down that she realizes hey she's not that bad of a person she saved my life and then all of a sudden psh, she's best friends with the princess and she's not angry at her anymore and the same thing happens with the prince but you don't realize it because like they only get one or two scenes together through dreams where they don't really talk about much they're more like confused as to why they're dreaming about each other and stuff like that and once they meet in real life there happens to be a situation in which the prince saves Zeely's life and then Zeely's all like best buds come make out with me and like she already was attracted to the dude before they met in real life so like now that he's saved her she's instantly not angry at him anymore despite the fact like he's been hunting them this whole time all of that like as long as you save her life she doesn't care like she's just like i forgive you and i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but that's like how i thought of it for so it didn't end up making me angry because i was just like really just likes everybody who saves her like as long as you save her you're her friend like i'm pretty sure like if like something was happening and she was fighting against the freaking king and like she fell down on like a 
older was gonna crush her and the king like shoved her out of the way she would be crying at this man's funeral like he won't that bad he wasn't that bad he was a good man he saved my life and she would totally forgive him because like, that just seems to be the theme so far is that she just forgives anybody and is friends with anyone who saves her no matter like how much resentment she had towards them for whatever reason but anyway now the prince is involved and he's like a good guy temporarily you know because he's still having his angst and moral quandaries so like they are at the village this village thing blah 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 festivals oh magic blah 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 we're gonna go and do the ritual blah 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 they go to do the ritual da, da, da. it kind of fails because the prince is like no and like he tries to like cut him down or something and stop the ritual which is like okay fine like again this is where i get kind of irritated at the prince like he's supposed to be the villain in this story who is um going to be capable of a redemption arc later on but like you just meet him during his meltdown his breakdown where he's just battling with these morals and he doesn't really know what to think or what to believe or anything like that and like i can see what tomi was going for because it is very reminiscent of the zuko arc in avatar but it's just like the reason why the Zuko arc works so well is because it was very very clear in the first season that he was the bad guy like he was the bad guy despite the fact you could clearly see that he might have good reasons that he's probably not completely evil he was very clearly the bad guy you could see right away his morals you could see everything about him from that beginning and then later when he starts to turn to become team avatar he has his meltdown he has his emotional moments and like you already knew who he was right and now you're seeing him go through these moral quandaries these emotional moments all of these horrible things and like you see all the episodes and where he's just like super angst where he's just like whew, all everywhere and then finally he settles and he joins the team out of Batar and now you get to see the new Zuko and like the new person that he is. So you get three different Zukos. You get the the tough evil bad guy Zuko, the one who has to go through the emotional breakdown, the turmoil and everything inside trying to figure out where he stands morally and then the new Zuko, the good one. And I felt like with this we didn't really get a chance to see the evil one or the king's son right we didn't really get a chance to see the king's son um instead we just met this prince who was like always going through emotional turmoil always like he's always in a state of breaking down so you really don't get a firm grasp of his character so like he doesn't really seem like a good villain so of course like when he does the thing that's really predictable in the end it's just like it doesn't hit you as hard because you're just like oh yeah of course like of course he's gonna be like the good guy for like two seconds and then be like i'm the bad guy again because he can't decide what he wants to be and he has no clear motives for his reasons or like it was predictable in the sense like of course you knew it was gonna happen because like that's what always happens in books but his character in itself for his emotions aren't very predictable at the same time because you like never know which way he's gonna swing like at any moment he could just be like i'm good now i'm evil now like you didn't know and he was like really annoying but the whole point is is that he stops them while they're in the middle of it and Zeely's like how could you betray me and like I can't remember exactly what happens and I think this death eater is attacking me yet again uh, uh. I can't remember exactly what happens like how they continue with the ritual but I think like for a few pages you think like oh man they failed like magic is gone but then the princess does something and like helps them and then it ends with everyone having magic and magic once again being released back into the world so like they succeeded yay but the unintended side effect of that is people who at first you wouldn't even think would have magic because like again magic users always have white hair always so people who have white hair are magic users like no matter what you have that ability have that ability for magic and um now the princess has magic at the very end of it she like i don't know i think it was like lightning powers or something like that and she was like zap 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 
I have magic now and Z-Lead's like, oh fucking shit. We were cool, man, but like, you can't have magic. Like, it felt like Zeely was jealous for whatever reason. Um, cause I guess she, she was still kind of angry at the princess. But the whole thing is, is like now, oh, everybody has magic and you can't really predict who has it. Again, to make a comparison to Avatar, it's sort of like in Legend of Korra when like airbenders came back and it was like no real distinguishing like this person's gonna be an airbender was just like a bunch of random people just anybody was an airbender now you could not tell who would be an airbender just like anybody could have been an airbender um so it was like that now all these people have magic and now there's no easy distinguishing them because while what's his name i don't know what his name is the prince's hair was turning white the girl's hair was not white. I think by the end of it, she did have a stripe of white in it to signify that maybe her hair would, she'd get a full head of white hair by the end of it. Like in the next book, she'll have a full set of white hair as her hair is going to change um, to match the fact that she now has magical powers. Um, but like, again, I don't know. Um, I also don't know, like, is the princess going to be evil? Because like the way that it was kind of depicted with like Z Lee kind of being like an oh shit moment when she realizes the princess has magic. It's like, is the princess now going to be like a little bit evil, like power hungry with magic, but maybe like not totally evil, like a girl with messed up moral sort of good evil sort of thing. I don't know. Um, so overall, I did like it. I thought it was a good book. Um, I think, I think this is a problem for me for any book that tries to do the Avatar thing. Like Avatar is just such a big like, pinnacle of storytelling, right? So I can understand totally when people want to take from Avatar and borrow from it and stuff like that to tell their story and they should go ahead feel free to like that is what's so great about that show and how great it was is that it's able to inspire other people but at the same time I can't help but be like but did you actually see like how good Avatar was at their character development and storytelling because you're you're a little lackluster on it like the prince was so disappointing and like Zuko had three seasons to do that and multiple episodes and that was kind of just all done in this one book um like it was an attempt all in one book and like of course there are going to be other books so they'll have more time to flesh it out but there was just a lot of things in here where it's like it, it was better than like truth witch in that sense but like at the same time i was just like have you actually really seen the show because like i don't think you're grasping these like basic concepts of like character development of like why it works so well like you're trying to do this thing but i don't think you understand why it worked in the first place to remake it in your own image like you're not fully succeeding so there was a lot of points in like character development and like character action and reaction that was really really weak um and could have used a lot more development i think in ranks of like, like strongest to weakest characters i think it goes for me zeely the princess and then the prince zeely because her motivations were pretty easy to understand for me she was hot tempered she's classic gryffindor um the only really confusing thing about her was the fact that she forgave the prince so easily but the princess got her resentment longer but like I explained my theory for why I think it worked the way it did so like that was easy for me to explain the princess I was like oh like are you evil are you good like what's going on here or like you need to stop being whiny I think it could have done a little bit better there and then like the prince was just a mental breakdown and I think he needed a lot of work to kind of clean it up to give him more stability um so that you could actually get a firm grasp on his character before he went straight into breakdown mode like the whole time I feel like he's just like a really Kylo Ren character. The prince, yeah, he's definitely the Kylo Ren of the story where he's just like kind of angry boy breaking stuff and just like, oh no, I'm gonna do this and like kind of sapping around and you're like not really sure what he's gonna do but you're probably sure it's not gonna be good. This why he's like, oh, I'm not a bad guy. It's just like, oh, okay, whatever. 
so overall I did like this book I'm probably gonna pick up the next one because I'm curious but like if I pick up the next one it's not gonna be like oh man I'm so excited to read it it's going to be more out of curiosity I think I rated this a four stars um it was like a four four and a half um which mainly it earned it for originality in the sense of like having characters that aren't very seen often in mainstream media like there are a lot of books similar to this if you go and look for them i can think of a couple um but like in mainstream media this type of story with like african inspired with a people of color um cast of characters with characters who are like angry and that's okay and like like that sort of thing in this light it's not as mainstream as it should be uh, so like it did a lot of new things that I haven't seen before but at the same time it was just like uh like after I got past all of that excitement of seeing the things that like oh I've only ever seen this kind of rarely I was just like it could have used some work so I'm hoping better for Tomi's next books like the next books in the series whatever she goes on from there this book to me is like Tomi has the promise of Lee Bardugo to tell compelling stories but she, this is her Grisha verse this is her her shadow and bone trilogy people are gonna love it but we gonna see some problems in it and we're hoping that she writes that six of crows that everybody can love like that's how I feel about that book this book is like similar to how I feel about Lee Bardugo it's a great book it's good it's like doing great things you definitely need a lot of work I definitely can see this as your first book but you show so much promise and potential I'm gonna keep an eye on you because I'm pretty sure that in the next couple years you're going to write a book that is outstanding and entertains me and the characters are flawless and everything is flawless so those are my thoughts on this book and that's it so if you have any other comments you want to add or how you felt about this book then do that in the comment section down below otherwise close button buttons and goodbye internet